why God has brought us here. God did not bring us here so that we would just have a church space. God did not bring us here so that we would have a fixed address. God did not bring us here so that we would just have a mailing address. We can say, yes, we are the church of 587 South Orange. Surely there must be a reason why God brought us here. And God brought us to a place. If you look around, there are very few churches here. So there are churches further down. Or perhaps further up. But God planted us here for a reason. And the question is, why has God brought us here? What is here? What is so special about this location that God will bring us here? We've been searching for four months. Five months. And we searched everywhere. And this is where God brought us to. Why has God brought us here? To understand why God has brought us here, remember where God has brought us from. We are once in a place where we were worshipping God and nobody could even see us worshipping God. Now we can be seen. Now they know that the people of God are here. Amen. We were walking here yesterday. We were doing a lot of work here yesterday. And people were asking, what is this? What is coming here? What is here? And we were inviting them. I said, we'll meet at 4 o'clock. But we could never do that where we were coming from. We were on the second floor and it was so difficult to have access to the people. Now God has put us in a place where we have access. So why God has brought us here? The first thing to remember, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians that the house of God is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ as the chief cornerstone. This is an apostolic house, a prophetic house. We are an apostolic people. We are an apostolic people. And an apostolic people are a people that are always on the move. Why? Because apostolos is the sent one. And if you're being sent, that means you're always on the move. So God has brought us here for a reason. He did not bring us here to just come and sit. Yes, work to be done. And in Deuteronomy chapter 1, I start from verse 6. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you and take your journey, and go to the mount of the Amorites, and unto all the places nigh there unto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after him. Go ye and possess the land. So we are here to possess territory for Jesus Christ. Amen. The land that we possess today, listen to me. The scripture reading has stopped. That's it. For the, the land that we possess today, there's a psalm that says, The rod of the wicked shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Psalm 125, verse 3. But the land that we possess today, that we are possessing today, is souls. You're called to possess souls for Jesus Christ. The Great Commission is not to go and possess land. In the Old Testament, the Great Commission was to possess land, to have land and to share it among 12 tribes. That was what they were given. Now, Christ gives us another commission. Our commission is to go and draw souls to the kingdom. And God says, you've circled this place for too long. Now, it's time to do that which I have called you to do as an apostolic people. I have called you to possess souls for Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. If you like, from this place you are in, Possess the next floor. Possess the next building. Possess the tire yard, the tire, car tire yard or whatever. And if not possess one soul, we've not done what God has called us to do. We are apostolic people. We are called apostles. Seize territory for demons. They take an area that a demon has power and they say to that demon, that power, that principality, this place is no longer yours in the name of the Lord. 
come out from there. Because, and the demon said, why? He said, because I want to dwell there. I want to dwell there. So God has brought us here. And what God is saying is that this is our base. A base is just a place where you operate from. It's not where you dwell. It's just a place where you operate from. There are some churches I go to. I want to say, ah, no, you can't sit down the last sister, Dr. Sitz. Ah, no, you can't sit down the last brother, Abraham sit. No, it's just a base. It's just a place where we come and touch and agree on our strategy to strip Satan of his assets. It's a place where we just come and, in the name of the Lord, empower one another for the battle that is outside. Hopefully the battle is not inside. Hopefully we are not fighting ourselves here. It's where we come to strengthen ourselves to fight the good fight of faith outside. Listen to me. Anybody inside the church can have faith. That's great. But your faith is needed outside. Because that's where the enemy is. The enemy is not here. It's outside. Goliath is not here. Goliath is outside. And you need faith. So God has brought us here. And he wants souls to be soul conscious. He wants us to be soul winners. He wants us, when we were at 703 Makata, we could make an excuse. I say, well, see how the place is, the location, the... we can't make that excuse anymore. This house, God has brought us here to build up this house so that the saints can be equipped. There are many believers in Christ in the book of Acts, there was a man. The man knew the word of God more than anybody. His name was Apollos. And the man could preach eloquently. He was sound in the word of God. But lay people, Aquilas and Priscilla, lay people, people that don't have title like him, they called him aside. They said, we know you are a good man or preacher of the word of God, but you don't know the things of the spirits. Lay people. Touching the things of the Spirit. So we want to bring many Christians, they are lay, they are simple, they are still on level one. You are going to bring them so that they can move from level one to level whatever God has them to move to. That is why God brought us here. We were arriving here today and we said something. Brother Siano had mentioned it to me yesterday. We are right by East Orange, Newark, and everything. Right there. Strategic. So God wants to empower you so that you can go and bring the fish. When God made promise to Abraham, listen to me. When God made promise to Abraham, he said, Abraham, count the stars in the sky. Abraham go, one, two, three, four, then he realized he only has ten fingers. There are so many stars. God said, that is how I will give your offspring shall be. I shall give you all this land. That's what God told him. He said, I will give you all this land. It shall be yours. God is not saying the same thing today. You know why? Because this is not my home. Jesus said, I go to prepare a home for you. That where I am, you will be also. In my father's house, there are many mansions there. If it were not so, I would have told you. So our home is not here. But our job is to bring people to come and join us in our home. So that nobody will miss heaven. So that nobody will miss heaven. That is why God has brought us here. If you are selfish, you won't enjoy this house. You won't enjoy this house. If you're just coming to sit and receive, you won't enjoy this house. Because God is pouring into you so that you can pour into others. Now is the time. This is why God has brought us here. There are people walking the streets every day. Short message to me. Begin to ask God why we are here. Why am I here, Lord? Why did you connect me here? So God spoke to Joshua and said, You've circled this mountain long enough. Go, I've given you all the land. God had given him all the land. But Joshua is very strategic. 
You see, God has given me all this land, but I don't know what is there. What if there are lions there? What if there are tigers there? What if there are scorpions there? What if there are snakes there? What if there are wolves there? Glory lion is there. Snake, serpent is there. Wolf is there in sheep clothing. Scorpion is there. So what did Joshua do? He sent spies to go spy out the land. Our sister from Philadelphia. You are connected to this ministry. You are like a spy for Philadelphia. You are like our spy. I want you to know today. You will get your deliverance. You will get your healing. You will get your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. But that Philadelphia that God is sending us to, you are our spy. Because you know, I've only been to Philadelphia like two, three times in my entire life. We were in Bristol. I don't know Philadelphia. I don't know A from B. Joshua had never been to the land, so he sent spies. So you know how Philadelphia is. You know the nitty gritty, the ups and downs, the east and the west. If you put me in West Philadelphia, I won't think I'm in South Philadelphia. I won't even know. But you, you know. The same thing, God sent out spies before we got here. And as it applies to the house of God, I close with this thought so we can pray. As it applies to the house of God, so it applies to you. Don't forget that. The way the house of God is, is the way you are. You know why? Because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are his house. You are his house. You are his house. He dwells in you. His house is not these four walls. <laughs> what is he? What's he going to do in this house? You are his house. And he has called you to win souls. There is an anointing for the soul winner. When you're somebody that wins souls, Satan will attack you because he doesn't like you to come and depopulate his kingdom. He will attack you. But the anointing God will give you when you're walking, Satan will be shaking. You'll be shaking. We have to move to another level. This is an apostolic house. Apostolic ministry. It is different from pastoral ministry. It is different from pastoral ministry. I love you. The pastor is like, hey, how are you doing, sister? Everything okay? Can we pray for you? It is well, I'll come visit you. Oh, he's sick. Can we go visit him? Those are great things. Apostle doesn't think like that. Apostle, when he goes to the bar, I say, how is everything? He says, there's a problem. Apostle is not just saying he shall be well. Who is responsible for the problem? Who is the strong man? Let's get the strong man out of the way so that the problem will stop. Pastor, don't talk like that. Pastor, don't talk like that. So God has brought us here for a reason. It's an apostolic house. The word of God says, the house of God is founded upon the apostles and the prophets with Christ as the chief cornerstone. Prophets speak. Prophets declare. Prophets talk. Don't say the Lord, don't say the Lord, don't say the Lord, don't say prophets talk. That's why they get in trouble. Read the Old Testament, they're always talking, 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 talking. They get in trouble. So prophets declare, they speak. Apostles do. Prophets declare. Apostles do. But apostolic hands. You are an apostolic people. Amen. Next Sunday, by the grace of God, it will be more comfortable. Our central air will be on by God's grace. The carpets, everything will be done by God's grace. Bring people to come and be blessed. Amen. I stood here, Pastor V said to me, say, Apostle, don't stand here, you're blocking people. I stood here. And as I stood here, 
the Lord is ministering to me. I said, ah, Lord, this weekend has been, you know, it has been hectic. Brooklyn on Friday, all day yesterday here, and then Sunday, Brooklyn, Sunday here. It has been very hectic. And the Lord said to me, say, my son, today you have to draw out of your reservoir for the people. You have to draw out of your reservoir because I filled you and I filled you deep. Many of us want to serve the Lord. But there's hindrance. There's hindrance. You want to remove the hindrance so that you can serve the Lord. Pastor said to me this morning, we were driving to Brooklyn. He said, if somebody were not in this house, that person would fall. And our prayer to God is to build disciples, deliver your prayers, to equip you to be a man of God, a woman of God. Pastor, we pray for you. When you have that problem, we pray for you. Apostle will say, ah, ah, you want me to deal with the problem? Why can't you deal with it yourself? Go to the word of God and I'll show you how to deal with it. How to call on the name of the Lord. You bind that strong man. You can bind that strong man. You'll be given authority. You don't need me. You'll be given authority. So God has brought you here. So that by the time you leave, in the name of Jesus, by the time you leave, when you're coming, they must be saying he's coming. She's coming. She's coming. She's coming. She's coming. We have a prophetess friend in Nigeria, Abel Buta, Nigeria. Somebody was sick in the hospital. So she went to visit the person. Before, if you've seen deliverance here, you know that demons speak from people. We've seen, I've seen demons speak. Where the person did not open his mouth, the mouth was shut. And the demon was speaking from him. So this uh, sister of us in the Lord, she was going to the hospital to visit the sick person on the sick bed. Before she got to the ward, this person is sick, has not been talking. Has not been talking like in a semi-coma. Has not been talking. All of a sudden, the demon started to speak. Say, oh, she's coming with fire, fire, every time fire. That person is coming with fire. And that's how God wants to equip us. Amen. The anointing God has given you is the anointing to destroy dark powers, Amen. demonic powers. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And when we are together, we are stronger. Amen. We are stronger. Because when we go outside tomorrow, we are not going to be together like this. When we go outside tomorrow, we are not together like this. So God put us here so that when we are together, we are stronger. So we draw strength as iron sharpened iron. So that when we go into the world tomorrow, we receive strength today for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Father, it's a simple word. I thank you for your word. Father, help us to remember that the reason why we are here, the first promise you made to your disciples, Jesus, was that you will make them fishers of men. Lord, the first promise you made to Abraham was that you will make him great. You said to Abraham, I will make you great. Jesus, you've already made us great because we are in you and you are great. But the first promise you made to us believers is that come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Let the anointing to fish for men be upon us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, concerning the reason you brought us here and regarding ministry, we pray concerning this house for unlimited expansion Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. That you will stretch us from the east to the west, from the north to the south. That through us the name of Jesus Christ will be known and glorified. Amen. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And everyone said, Amen. let's give the Lord a round of applause. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I'm going to raise the Lord's tithe and offering at this time. There's no compulsion to give whatsoever. There's no compulsion to give whatsoever. God knows how he finances his house. But all we ask is that you give as the Spirit of God instructs. 
to give as the word of God instructs and as the Spirit of God directs. Amen.